Hello and welcome to another episode of DIY by the German Guy. In today's episode, I want to go over the start of a DIY synthesizer that I designed and built from scratch. The design is not completely done yet, but I've started uh, prototyping and building some of it. So if you're interested, this will be a multi-part series. Like and subscribe if you want to follow along with the development. And without further ado, let's get started. So I started this project because I'd always wanted to build my very own DIY synthesizer. So here I am thinking, hmm, what, what could I use for a sound chip? Well, Commodore 64, I very fondly remember I had a very cool sound chip, the SID chip, which was legendary. So I talked to a friend of mine, Chris Hulsbeck, who is a legendary Commodore 64 sound designer. And he also composes many other video game music, movies, and what have you. So I got his opinion on designing my own synthesizer and what about using the SID chip. His feedback was, well, why don't you use the SEM3394 chip, which is basically a whole synthesizer on a chip. You need one chip per voice. So I was doing my research on the SEM3394, came to find out. Nowadays, they're hard to come by, but there's a replacement by another company called the AS3394. It's basically pin compatible with the SEM3394, except it has a couple more pins, so you have to make a few changes here and there, but it's basically the same thing. So I go and order some of these chips, they arrive, and I started building the hardware around it. And so I wanted to show you guys what I've come up with so far, then I want to get your opinions to see if it's worth continuing the synthesizer building your own synthesizer series. I'm planning to use some ESP32 chips as brains, so to speak, and they will be driving, in addition to the synthesizer chip, they will also be driving these little displays. They're very cool. I think some of the existing synthesizers, such as the Hydrosynth, are using at least similar displays, displays if not uh, maybe even the same. But that's my idea. I want to use some of these ESP32 chips. I want to use the AS3394 per voice. So I'm thinking six or eight voice. Maybe you can leave your comments in the description. Let me know how many voices you guys would like to see. Um, I'll be multiplexing some of that stuff as to drive more than one voice with uh, one ESP32 chip. The other idea is I'll be using what is usually meant for an audio DAC using an I2S interface, which is like a, basically a serial single pin interface that you can output digital audio and then the other side will take the signal and convert it back to an audio signal at up to 384 kilohertz or so. And the plan is to use these DACs as input devices into the voltage controlled oscillator to control frequency and also to use it to control filtering and any other voltage controlled inputs that the AS3394 chip has. So I'm gonna use the high frequency DAC, which is super cheap, the I2S interface. Even if I just run one, I should be able to multiplex it out to um, several voices by just using one DAC. That's the hope anyway, we'll see how it goes. So let me run you over what I've designed and built so far. Okay, first let me go over the heart of this bad boy, which is this little chip right here. It's the actual AS3394 chip attached to it. I put a little tension meter here because this pin over here gets the reference voltage, which is used to tune VCO to whatever the input voltage is. So if it's slightly off, you can tune the frequency with this potential meter right here. Then over here are some filtering capacitors that are required for the filter section of the chip. Then uh, there's this uh, symmetric, uh, I forget what it's called, symmetric something something. Usually you do this with transistors but in their schematic they, they had it listed with these diodes so just built whatever they schematic said. Then I have 
Um, minus 6.5 volts here, which I'll go over how I got those in a moment. Got ground, got the plus, I think I used, I just used straight plus 5 volts for that. Then there are, there are some uh, external inputs to the chip. You can attach uh, inter external things to it. Um, and then here obviously is the output, which I've got hooked up to the oscilloscope so I can see what it's actually doing. Let's see, and some control voltages for the, for the VCO, which I think it's this yellow wire here. I'm doing something with that, oh wait. So somewhere over here is like the, the VCO input. And then the output that I'm tapping into is here. And I'll show you those on the oscilloscope in a moment. So here's my trusty power supply. I've got it set exactly for 5 volts. And as you can see, it's only drawing about 90 milliamps or so with a uh, with one voice attached. It's going to go up a little bit, but shouldn't go up too much more, I hope, uh, by adding a few more voices. Here's a little buck converter I'm using. It takes 5 volts as an input I'm over here somewhere. Then uh, first pin, I think there's five volts, then ground, then you get an output of plus 15 volts, then another ground, and then you get an output of minus 15 volts. So from just five volts, it generates plus minus 15 volts. And as you can see, it only drew like 90 milliamps, so pretty happy with the result. I can take the plus and minus 15 volts then to generate the symmetric voltages that the ACE 3394 chip ones. Uh, I use that to generate the 6.5 volts and for that I just use a simple voltage divider with a, uh, what is that, it's a 2k potentiometer back here and uh, so I just put it between minus 15 volts and ground and then I tuned it so I get about 6.5, minus 6.5 volts Going via this cable, here, going via this cable back here to my minus 6.5 on the synthesizer chip, and the plus five from the synthesizer chip, I just hooked it up straight to the uh, five volts on the power supply directly without using the buck converter. And that seems to be fine. I can actually see a frequency on my uh, on my oscilloscope. So here's another interesting part of my circuitry. I've used an LM324 generic op amp to do some voltage conversion magic. So the issue is that my ESP32 chip, the DAC converter, only puts out 0 to 5 volts to uh, control the ACE3394 chip. But unfortunately, the ACE3394 chip wants things like minus 4 volts to plus 4 volts for the VCO where I think 1 volt is an octave so you get 8 octaves with uh, the voltage but how do I convert the output voltage of 0 to 5 volts actually I think it's only 0 to 3.3 volts to make things worse how do I convert that range from 0 to 3.3 volts to minus 4 to plus 4 volts range. So I looked up some schematics and I found one that works with an LM324 or any op amp for that matter. It's just a generic thing. Um, and I was able to install three or four potentiometers to be able to adjust the voltage exactly to what I need. So basically one of these adjusts the offset, the voltage offset, and another one adjusts the voltage multiplication. So from 0 to 3 volts, I would have to drop it by minus 4 basically, and then extend the range to 8 volts. But the problem is these potentiometers, they're not independent, so if you twist one, it affects the other. So it took a little bit of tweaking, but I think I got uh, I got it pretty close to minus four to plus four. And then I realized I was going to use a different DAC anyway, which goes from I believe minus one 
1.05 to plus 1.05 or so. I will show you that one next. So here you can see when I'm planning to use to drive anything voltage controlled, whether it be the VCO, VCF, anything else that I need uh, control voltages. So at the heart here is the ESP32 chip. This is actually a little internet radio prototype that I built just to prove out that I can use an ESP32 to drive the DAC, which in this case is a stereo DAC, uh, 30, up to 32 bit, I think, at up to 384 kilohertz. And I've got the two hooked up together. This guy, I found, uh, I found actually something, because there are so many examples out there, but not very many that I got working on the ESP32 chip. Usually they're Arduino based um, and I got it working via the single pin I2S interface to output sound via this connector here. So the idea is that the DAC will be using a CD4066 high speed switch or something to that effect with a sample and hold capacitor on each pin to be able to round robin this guy. So this guy basically outputs at 384 kilohertz uh, digital analog, analog conversion rate. So it should be able to drive multiple voltage controlled oscillators and it'll do basically like a round robin type thing where it, where it supplies one pin, then another, then another, then another. And, and the CD4066 quickly spins the voltage output from this guy around so you, so you can multiplex the DAC to I'm planning maybe eight times or so to supply eight different DAC voltages with just one DAC and one ESP32 chip that's the plan and one CD4066 chip and obviously eight uh, capacitors to hold the voltage when, uh, when I switch. So fingers crossed that's still to be proved now that I can do this with the CD4066 fast enough but most of the time the VCO doesn't have to be adjusted that fast. It's on the order of like maybe one kilohertz or so, if that. So if I got 384 kilohertz stack chip, that should be plenty fast to supply multiple one kilohertz uh, or multiplex it to multiple one kilohertz stack outputs. That's the plan. Wish me luck. See how it goes. I'm also going to use the ESP32 to drive these little OLED displays. Let me go over what I've got so far. So here's my power supply again. Here is my oscill um, oscilloscope output. So you can see there's definitely something going on. It's roughly, what is it? Like uh, five, six kilohertz or so. You can see that. And so this is being driven by the little synthesizer chip. So now watch what happens. On the right, this will be my my ESP32 output that drives the VCO. Now remember, the VCO goes from minus 4 volts to plus 4 volts. So right now at 0 volts, I'm getting about 6 kilohertz or so. So if I crank this up uh, to like, let's say, 2 volts, ooh, that's already pretty high. Let's say maybe 1 volt. So remember, I want to go from 0 to 3.3 volts for my output. So now, I'm getting a much lower frequency already. It's uh, uh let me see here if I can adjust this. It's about 2.3 kilohertz now, down from six. So if I go higher here, even go to like about two one volts control voltage. Now my frequency is already down to like 600 hertz. So you can definitely see that my my simulated DAC voltage from the ESP32 has a direct effect on the frequency of my AS3394 chip. And that's how, I've got, how far I've gotten so far. So next steps are, um, yeah, what are the next steps? Probably to prove out the ESP32 chip with the DAC and get that hooked up to the synth. So I can actually use a digital device to control the voltages and therefore control the AS3394 chip. 
Okay, that's it for today. So I'd really like to get your feedback. If you like this, if you think I should continue with the product or if I should just scrap it and think of something else. Personally, I'm really excited about synthesizers and I hope to bring this thing to fruition. So please leave your comments, like, subscribe if you like it or be honest if you don't like it. But I'm hoping to build this thing so, so the more enthusiastic you are, the more likely I'll be to build this thing. And until next time, au revoir.